Hey guys, it's Chris from Trahone Infinity. Yes, I have not forgot that saying right there. It has been ages since I have recorded anything. Yes, I know you guys must be thinking, Chris, you come up here all the time. Like you disappear for like six months to a year. You come back and then say something about, hey, I'm gonna make videos every single day or every other day or some some crazy idea you know you just disappear so I'm, I'm gonna be straight with you guys to this this time on the comeback i i can't promise any daily video videos or any weekly videos you know i'm, I'm kind of i guess you could say i'm kind of struggling here so i'm trying to get my work done my school work my uh i've been working a lot as well and then i've been working on some projects and it's just so much to do that it's really t hard to find time to sit down and record like i used to so I'm sorry to say there won't be much tryhard infinity with my, you know, amazing saying that you guys love so much. But I wanted to do a video today about, um, I guess one of the, the the best ways to win any type of victory. Like this is like uh, not a going going away present, but like a uh, just in case I don't make a video for a while present for everybody who has a question about what's the best way to win or how can I win this or how can I do that I'm gonna let you know right now Civ is a game that is really easy to exploit and this is the most powerful exploit of all that you could find on Civ so this will win you any victory that you possibly want you can win by gold domination you can win by whatever but as you can see I'm just playing I'm actually gonna talk over as I play because I didn't really well, I tried to record it while playing, but it's been a while since I did a recording, so I didn't have my setup really good, and it didn't sound well, so I'm re-recording, so instead I'm doing it this way. So, this strat, I'm trying to my best not to say it right in the beginning. I want to, you know, build up some suspense before I tell you the strat, so I want you guys to, like, pay attention to as I'm, how I'm playing. I chose the Americans just because I think the Americans are better suited for this type of, um, this type of victory. I mean, you could do any sieve. This this strat right here goes for, to say, uh, goes to say, goes for saying, goes to say. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but this strat right here is best for the Americans just because of their um really fast production. And I'm not going to take any credit for this. I did get this strat and I built upon it a little bit from uh, Joe Leonard's video. So if you guys like to see sieve videos, I think he still makes them. I haven't checked, but I, I believe he still makes sieve videos and he does some really good sieve videos. But anyway, um. As you can tell, I used my great builder instead of, um, you know, uh, building something great. I, I decided to build me uh, a galley to get the uh, instant three warriors. And if you didn't know that, if you use a great builder to build uh, any type of like um, regular troop, not a wonder because a wonder builds instantly. So if you build any type of unit. It takes all that production, stores it up, and then gives you that unit. But instead, if you um do that like if you let's say you have something that you can build for 150 and you insta insta build it with your uh your your great builder then that takes that 150 production and allows you to allocate that for anything else that you want to switch it to so you can switch it to whatever then that's what i just did there so i got me um an army because i thought they would have some troops so i attacked once because that's another strat you could do you can attack once win or lose but well, actually no you don't want to lose i take that back you attack once and once they're down to one you press B if you don't think you're going to win. I would I would press B before they even get the 1. But um, in most cases, when it gets to 1, you want to press B. Attack with another troop if you have another one that's available. And then when you're down to your last troop to attack with, go ahead and make a full-out army and attack again. So that's like uh, a good way to break them down and then attack and take over the city. But in this case, I don't have to do all that. And as well, if it's archers, it might be a little more difficult to do that because with uh warriors the max they can get to i believe is 2.5 defense with veteran and fully fortified and they have no um defense bonuses like uh well they do have one they have a great general but they're not getting no great general trust me trust me on that they are not getting no great general but as you can see um uh, i went ahead and wiped out the uh neighboring neighboring sieve so you guys can get the idea that you might want to go ahead and take out at least one sieve as fast as possible if you can if not it still works it doesn't matter but this strat is not about science, it's not about gold, it's not about, um, it's not about uh, culture, that one slipped my mind, it's not about any of that, it's actually about placement of your city, so you might be thinking, that's it, that's it, placement of your cities, but if you notice something, something I normally don't, I don't normally do this in any of my games, I put my cities one spot away from each other. That, that is horrible. That's that's like horrendous to look at that. Now you might be thinking why, but if you keep watching throughout the video, just watch this play style as I go. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys a little bit of it right now. The key to winning every single game 
off the uh, exploit, because I'm calling this an exploit. It's not even like there's no skill to it. It's just build. Just build cities. Now, you might be thinking, what do, you, what do you mean just build cities? I mean just build cities. Like, take your city, walk two spaces out, and build a city. Now, you might be, oh, my gosh, sorry about that there's my phone. But you might be thinking, um, how's that going to help me? If I just build cities, I'm going to have a whole bunch of crap cities. Yeah, that is true. You will have a whole bunch of crap cities. That's the point of this strat. So, as you build more cities, you increase your, um, your early science game and if you don't know the early science game is the most important game to get those bonuses out to get your uh, population up to get the literacy because if you get literacy that's one plus science in all your cities it might not seem like much but one plus science in about you know 20 cities is that's 20 extra science in the beginning of the game so and yeah I, I really mean that we're actually gonna hit 20 cities in the, in the early parts of the game so and when I say just build I mean go crazy like expand like crazy but as you can see right here um, the Indians are right here, and I believe, um, I think I take the rest of my troops. I build one more warrior. Most likely, I'm going to build one more warrior. Though. I'm just trying to figure out what I was doing as I was playing. Yep, there we go. I built one more warrior. So, th the reason I built one more warrior is because I have a, a total of five warriors. That's enough for one army and two extras. So, one more warrior makes two armies. And, as you can tell, I'm about to switch up and go for my, um, two horsemen. I'm going to build two horsemen in those cities. And the moment they build, I'm going to instant build a horseman to get another army and then take them out by like maybe seven more turns so that's a little thing you can think about you know planning ahead of how you want to attack so my attack plan in my head as I was doing it was two warrior armies one horseman army probably about probably about seven to ten turns and I'll, I might possibly be facing a uh, archer ar an archer army if I'm unlucky but if I'm lucky just a few archers that are fully fortified so you gotta start getting used to that and I, I just wanna go off topic here Civ has got, got to the point where I'm noticed even on Deity, there's like there's no challenge to it anymore. You can really you can exploit the the computers so easily. It's not even funny. I'm not talking about for you veteran veteran players out there. You know that's you know easily dominating online or you know you're just you're out there winning freaking uh, I guess 4,000 BC if that's possible. I'm talking about those players that they struggle on Deity. They can't even get to deity. They think it's impossible, but I'm gonna tell you a little, uh, a little secret about the computers. They don't have any skill on deity. They just, they just cheat. They just cheat. It's, just, it's plain and simple. They just cheat. They automatically get text that they shouldn't be getting. They uh, can spawn troops in like, like a, a cloudy area that you can't see. There could be nothing there, but they can keep spawning troops until you uncover that cloudy area. If they have a boat near you, that boat will pump out an endless amount of troops without ever going back to restock, which makes no sense whatsoever. But I think that's how they wanted to make Deity to where it's like, okay, you're so good that you can beat all the, all the other levels, so we're just going to make this level completely unrealistic and challenging. But you'll eventually get to the point where you realize it's not a challenge at all. It's just how do you want to win. That's what it. That's what it's like getting on Deity. It's like how do you want to win. You, you get up there, you're playing your strategy, and eventually you get to the point where um, I just now started facing Civ is kind of boring to me. Civ is, I, that's why I, kinda, I, I don't really play it as much. It's just, uh, it's really boring. Single player is too easy. And you might be thinking, well, why don't you just go play online? Well, I do go play online. You know, I thought I thought online would be fun. But online is just combat. It's just early domination, people. That's all it is. And I, mean, I don't have a problem with early domination. I'm about to go on a rant here. I don't have a problem with early domination. But what I do have a problem with is when players won't even use the game's functionalities. Like, if you try to talk to another player to uh, enact some diplomacy, maybe... At least even if you're, if you're going to plan to attack somebody, accept my message and tell me, you know, when you're going to attack me. You know, don't just, like, attack me, I don't know, or at least give me some heads up. You know, let's try to make this um, a little bit more fun, you know. But most players, uh, when you try to talk to them with diplomacy, to either see what's going on and say, hey, what's up, to give them a peace, give them war, whatever. Even if you wanted to tell them you want to war them, they won't, they won't respond to you. They'll press B, and it'll reply back to you if you've ever seen this. Player is temporarily indisposed, meaning they're pressing B. They're not even taking the time to talk to you. And they won't talk to you until they're um, attacking your city. So that's literally 90% of every game. They're going to try to take your cities out every single every um, every uh, every game in the beginning. And then when one city gets taken out, here comes the beautiful part of why I hate online Civ. Now everybody just quits. The, the moment somebody leaves, I mean, the moment somebody gets another capital, the other players just quit. So now it's just a one on one, and you're trying to play a free for all. And now you have to play a one on one every single game. And then you have to you got to ask yourself. For what? You know, like, leaderboards? But, 
that's that, that's about it. You don't get anything. Like so, I don't understand why players don't actually try to play out and let you know civs build up before they have a massive war. Instead, it's more so about early domination and just personal opinion. I kind of don't like that. I don't like the uh, just trying to win in the beginning of the game just to because I could personally do it. I could get in there. I could get in there with a very powerful civ, wipe out the, uh, the newbiest players that I could find, and get maybe two capitals right off the back or get three capitals right off the back. You know. And then just realize, okay, I won. Now what? Let me do it again. It, it, it gets repetitive after a while. You'll start to realize that. But um, back to um, the subject at hand. So we just now reached another part of the um, the era, which this is this is a really important part too as well. You have to, um, you don't have to, but this is highly recommended. Do not settle another city until you have five texts. If you notice in the begin beginning of the game, if you're really paying attention, that I, I put it I put enough um science to get my five texts really fast, then I went over to uh try to get Code of Law. The reason I wanted my first five texts is because when you make a city, if you did not know, um it gives you one plus population every uh advancement in age that you go. So once you go up to where I went, let's say uh, medieval, then your cities won't be level two when you make them. They'll be level three. So the reason, the reason for that, why you, I really recommend that you do that first, is because this strat really won't work if you don't have level three cities. Like those level two cities I have over there, is not going to work too well with those two cities. So eventually, I'm going to scrap those cities and make better cities from those scrapped out cities. And that's pretty much it. So. I think what I'll do here, so this video isn't so long, is I'm gonna speed up the uh, non-important parts. You can watch it if you want to. But besides that, I think I want to do a quick promo promotion for you guys. So if you guys have never heard of Cashback, or if you have and never really got a good experience with Cashback, I just now recently discovered an amazing app that does Cashback. And for y'all who do not know what Cashback is, Cashback is just when you, when, whenever you make a purchase, you get a percentage back of what you purchase. So uh, let's say you bought yourself a um a twenty dollar pizza you know and you get ten percent back of your uh twenty dollar pizza that is two dollars back that you normally wouldn't have got you know that's two dollars back of your money so dosh is an app that does such things for you that's why i wanted to recommend this so if you look down in the description right now there will be a referral link that, there which if you sign up you will get five dollars so make sure you click down on that referral link and uh the moment you sign up link your card you'll get five dollars but the way cash uh the cashback works uh dosh the way it works Whenever you purchase something from a partner site, which they are partnered with a lot of brands, they have over 100,000 uh, partners, and some a lot of them are major name places, uh, at least around by where I live. Uh, Walmart, you got Target, you got uh, Papa John's, like places like that. They have really nice name places that you normally shop. So every time you shop with your link card and purchase at one of the partner places, which you can see on the app, you get a percentage back. So now just imagine that you're getting money back for doing what you do right now this very second. So I would recommend you go ahead and do it. I've been doing it recently, and it's it's a uh, it's a nice little lump of change. And as well, they um they also do hotel booking, so you get a um, really good cash back for hotel booking. It's really great. But so we're getting down to the point where the strat is about to happen now. I've been saying that for a while that hey, the strat's about to happen. We're about to do the strat, but we're now at the point where the strat is actually happening. To be truthful with you. The whole point of this strat, as I said, is to build and expand and walk out two spaces. It don't unless you really, really care about your cities that much. Don't really look for a great place. Just like make sure you don't cover up something like if you have a um, oxen or monarchy. You know, just don't miss out on that. Maybe uh, have a good granary city, and eventually, eventually you will need a production city. So early on in your expansion, build yourself a production city. I did it late on just because, like I said, I got to the point where I know how Civ is, and I already knew that I didn't need to build a single production city in order to win this with the Americans so you'll see me just have a whole bunch of open cities even in front of the computer just because like I said the game it has a lot of exploits that you could just exploit so as you can tell I'm building my cities and they're level three this is why I said you want to make sure you have at least five techs because five techs puts you in the next age and I'm getting level three cities every time I build I take that level three city and I then I build another city with um with the same city and turn it down to level two I the reason I'm building libraries in each and every city is because I got to a point where I realized I like to go for uh, engineering or sometimes you just get production whatever for, you know, just high population late in the game. And if you have a whole bunch of cities that have no, like, nothing building in them and you get, let's say, engineering, like if you want plus production, you have to go through every single freaking city 
and like put it on something to build. So I got to the habit of when I make my cities, I put them on library unless I need to build something, then I'll build it. But for the time being, it'll stay on library so it doesn't have me go to my cities. So as you can tell, I'm making my cities in the beautiful, the beautiful part of Americans. They have the uh, half off on production. So instead of having to pay 40, I'm paying 60 per um per settler it's going to go up every age the next time i think industrial uh industrial industrial age is the next age but when i hit that age it'll go from 20 to i believe 60 40 to 60 one of the two but it's going to it's going to skyrocket so it's important to get as many cities as you can off of the 20 and then when it hits that 60 if you're not making that gold you're fine but if you uh um, if you are making the gold by the 60 it don't really matter but as you can tell as well i'm building horsemen for um for the uh, half off price as well so that I can walk the horseman one spot and I'm not really doing it the, the best way possible you could do it way better this is just a demonstration purpose but you build yourself um, once you get enough cities by the way but you build yourself a settler you walk out two spaces you you then walk your horseman out to that same spot and it's better actually to have your horseman there before but in the video I'm just I'm trying to explain it the way you see it and then you switch off from your horseman to your uh, your city and then you settle it so you settle it off having no turns so you see how that works now if you want to do it the correct way you want to have your horseman or whatever you want already sitting out there early on and when you have it already sitting out there you can walk your settler over to your horseman that's already sitting there settle build another another settler then move over again two more spots settle and let's say you had another horseman somewhere in the vicinity about two spots away move a city over there settle do it one more time move your horseman to uh two more spots again move out another settler from the settled the settled city you just settled and then settle your fourth city that's four cities in one turn america has that potential to build up to at least from at minimum you should be building two to four cities every turn if you're really dedicated to it but um like i said in the description i'm not going that in depth or that try hard. It was just to show you guys how it works. You're about to see this beautiful thing of Civ losing a 4.5 to a 2.5. <laughs> you gotta love that. But at the point, I, like I said, I wasn't really caring. I was just attacking for the heck of it. No strat at all. I could have healed up and kept going slowly or, you know, put out more horsemen. But that would take longer. And like I said, this video is about, is about explaining how expansion can become too overpowered if you, uh, if you manage it correctly. If you get your expansion right to where you have your cities like this, where I got right now, it's overpowered. Now, if you really wanted to, you could have been less cautious like I was and even built on, like, the oxen and, like, uh, cattle and whatnot. And if you find um, wheat, you could build on top of it just because if it doesn't matter to you, you just want the extra science, then go for it. You have more cities that way, but I actually like getting that little extra, you know, uh, production or whatever just so I can build faster. But anyway, we're getting to the point to where we're at the uh, we're at the end you guys get the strat so i'm gonna skip forward and I, I really want to play the rest of it but the uh load time is gonna be crazy and uh gotta get this video rolling so i'm gonna skip down to like the end result so you guys can see what it would look like and what's the whole point of this strat you know at the final at the final outcome so hold on a second all right so I skipped down up to well up to 400 BC to where we just got to the industrial age and the reason is because now after getting my cities to a point of where I wanted them because you guys could go way past what I went to and um, build up to like 30 40 cities I think I built like maybe 15 18 cities and then I got bored but um, after you get to that that happy point of amount the cities that you want then you go ahead and switch off to um, most likely democracy because you want to be able to get the science that uh egyptians can get and science and uh, uh the chinese can get and also if you do this on the chinese it's kind of it's it's much more powerful on the science end but it's uh you get less results on the expansion end so there's that too but the whole point of this as you can tell the map is just loaded with cities right now i covered up the whole freaking map and i got a middle production city there that's that's an example of what a production city would look like you know i got my oak i got five mountains and i, I don't know if i had a hill or not i can't really tell but um, either way, an iron mine, uh, a courthouse, and just pump some, you know, maybe from a granary city, pump some settlers in there to, pop up, to pump up the population. And that is a golden city to have over, up to up to or over 100 production. Well, since this is actually the Americans, and they triple factory production, probably up to 150 to 200. But this is the whole point of it. As you can tell, um, there's a lot of science coming in. Well, actually, you can't tell at this exact point just because I'm not researching. I'm doing some overflows. But when it gets to the point, you'll see me pull up the uh, amount of science. And I believe, I think it was 140-something. I think it's, well, we might find out right here, yeah. 
181. 181 with democracy, and I've only built like maybe 18 or 15 cities. I didn't build libraries in any single city. I didn't build anything else to help out my um, science. I just built cities, and I only built 18. So imagine... Imagine if you were to out you go out and build some libraries in your cities if you were to do things to actually increase your science to properly pick these amount of cities that you just made with this expansion tactic you could have around 300 to 600 by 500 I mean not 500 by 50 AD or before then because I, I had one one time I had a good game I'm gonna go off topic one more time I had a good game where um, it was about I think 1800 BC and I was already pumping 300 science and that was before um that was before what you call it I was that was before I even got to to democracy and the reason being is because i was actually playing serious and at, unlike this game right now i built so many cities by uh, by uh zero ad it was not even funny like my game was actually lagging because i built so many cities so you you get to that point where if you build too many cities your game will start lagging but when your game starts lagging then you know check your science because your science will be it will be devastating you know or if you're on gold check your gold because it's going to be devastating now for culture I told you, I didn't say this uh, victory could win any type of victory, so really with culture, after you get so much gold, just turn it around and buy some some temples and buy some cathedrals, steal some great people. You got the, you got the production to do so. You got enough production to, you know, send out spies and or make caravans and get some gold and instant build all your wonders or whatever, so you got the production to do so. It's just, you know, if you want to do so. And as you can tell, though, this is really the whole strat and there's really no point in me showing the rest of the video i just wanted to get the point across of how you could work this strategy and you know really dominate and the rest of this video is just going to be me trying to now destroy them because i got to see i went ahead and converted it. i was like okay you know what let me go ahead and take them out because and, and when i was recording a video i thought i would be able to go through it all but i don't have no time for that so i hope you guys have enjoyed the video and um if you have any questions again leave them down in the comment section below but before i go i actually forgot to say one thing i forgot to say one important thing the project i did mention a project earlier on in the video which i think i should have said this in the beginning because I'm, I'm pretty sure most y'all <laughs> y'all probably don't make it to the end of my videos but anyway whoever makes it to my end of my videos then you really care and you want to hear about this i am making a game myself yes now you might be thinking really really making a game really you pulling a chain you say you're making 3d so i did say i was making 3d that i i, I got rid of that 3d is um 3D was actually really hard. I mean, it's not that I didn't learn it. It's that 3D was going to take a few years to be able just to learn it and then start to developing an animation. So that 3D project has been scrapped a long time ago. But this uh, this project, this game right here, it's a 2D game. It's more so like uh, Fable Grand Order. I mean, a Fable Fate Grand Order. If you ever played it, or if you haven't played it, go check it out. Or maybe like Ninja Saga on uh, Facebook. So if you ever you haven't seen those games, go check them out. And it has a mixture of uh, Naruto Arena as well with cards and abilities and stuff like that but that's the whole premises it's going to be a 2d game like that and unlike the 3d project this game is actually into its uh alpha stage where um i'm about to release an alpha copy and what i mean by alpha is uh a game that's like it's it's playable but it's not a beta it's not it's not to the point where it's a beta where it's pretty much a completed game and you just want people to try it out it's alpha where it's still under testing and I want people to try it out and help me find bugs. So if you're curious about that and want to get on the list to uh, be able to try it out, uh, go ahead and just, you know put something down in the comment section below. Or um, I think I'll leave a contact down there for you guys. And if it's not there, again, leave something down in the comment section below that you're interesting, interested in trying out the game. And I will let you know more about it because I I'm going to need some people to test it. And if you want to try it out, it's going to be awesome. The game's called... That don't mind a guitar. Now that's that's gonna be a tongue twister, but that's what the game's gonna be called. So if you have any questions about it, leave it down in the comment section below. Don't forget to try out Dosh. That is also gonna be down there in the description below. Go ahead and click that link, sign up, get your free five dollars, link your card, and start earning cash back for your normal everyday purchases. And that's all I have to say today, because I have to jet. So this has been fun with you guys. Chris with Try Hard Affinity signing out.